Good, good afternoon. My name is Eric. I'm the pastor here at Stillwell United Methodist Church. I'd like to welcome you to another session of halftime. As we get just past half the week, we'll have a devotion uh, following a couple of announcements. The main announcement I have is that next week is the week that it is finally here, Vacation Bible School. It's a big event in the life of the church, so we invite you to pray for, uh, well, first pray for all the kids, the kids that aren't a part of this church, the kids that aren't a part of any church. And this may be their only opportunity this summer to find out about Jesus and, and ways to grow in their faith and, and pray for them to be able to find ways to connect, to connect with Stillwell or with another church that may be closer to where they're at. We also ask you to pray for all of the volunteers, which we have a lot helping out uh, throughout the week. So, so pray with them, uh, pray for them. And um, on a practical note, Kevin asked that if you could donate some boxes of Kool-Aid coolers or Capri Sun for uh, snacks and for the volunteers, for the kids... Uh, that would be much appreciated. Our scripture this morning comes out of the book of Exodus. Last week we were in the book of Exodus, and uh, this week uh, we are continuing on. Here we are, we find the Israelites um, here after Pharaoh has let them go, and then Pharaoh sees they are trapped and Pharaoh changes his mind, and, and God locks that in. And I'm, what I need to tell you before I get started is, spoiler alert. We're reading the verses before this on Sunday. These are the verses afterwards. So I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but we're reading the verses that come up to this point, and today we will see that God actually did part the sea for the Israelites. So if you were in, going to be in anticipation of seeing if that happened, uh, we're going to let you know in advance um, that God does part the sea for the Israelites on their escape from Egypt. Um, Exodus 14, we're going to look at 19 through 22 and then 29 through 31. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and the light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. The Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The next section is going to go into the Egyptians pursuing them and them walking into the sea with the water on each side. But then after the Israelites get through, the water collapses on them. And then in verse 29, it picks up back with the Israelites. And it says, but the Israelites went through on the sea, through the sea on dry ground with a water, wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, what we see in here is something that you've probably heard from the time you were a child about the parting of the sea, the parting of the sea to allow the Israelites to go through and then the waters to come down to stop their oppressors from bringing them back into captivity. This, 
Uh, We're looking at Exodus as part of our series on God's declaration of independence, seeing how the uh, founders would have seen that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and that our freedoms come from God Himself. So, So how does that work in here we see God doing one of the biggest miracles we see throughout the Bible, and that is the parting of the sea, the parting and allowing the Israelites to cross over from one side to the other. Now, the build-up to this is, is, is so cool because it says there is a pillar of cloud. Now, if you've read in Exodus thus far, you would see there was a pillar of cloud that led them by day. So they knew where to follow the angel of God. And then at night, it became a pillar of fire. So they had headlamps to guide them through the wilderness. Now, they were in a position that we'll talk about more on Sunday, where they came down and they were basically trapped. They had nowhere to go. The army saw that the Israelites were stuck. And uh, the sea was on one side And there was no way to get around the Egyptian army on the other side that was overwhelming. Israel found itself in a position of impossibility. There was no way they could escape from this. And they whined and they complained and they said, we don't have a chance. And and it's kind of cool here because the pillar of cloud that was in front of them, guiding them, moved physically to the back of them to protect them and block them off. It said at night, on one side it showed darkness. To the Egyptians, they only saw darkness. They couldn't see what Israel was doing. To the Israelites, they had light so they could have that security. And then after That went to the back and protected them. Moses stretched out his hand and all that night the Lord drove back the sea. Now one thing that's significant to me here is it said all that night. We're used to thinking that when things happen in the Bible, when miracles happen, they happened instantaneously. And that wasn't always the case But all night long, the water was being driven back. All night long, God was working. And the Israelites could see that it was by God's power that was happening. Now, if you look at Pharaoh, the Egyptian side, the armies, it said it made everything dark for them. So they might have been hearing the winds roaring and the waters rushing and piling up but they probably could see nothing that was going on. And the next thing they know, what they could see is the Israelites walking through the water. So they decided to follow, thinking no matter, even if the waters moved, they were still stuck. They were still trapped. And it says the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians. They feared God and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. What I want to think about is is this. As we are here in the midweek and we're going to talk about it more on Sunday. But when have you faced something that was impossible? There's no way out. When you're stuck, is it a health issue? Is it a job issue? Is it a family or relationship issue? When are you facing something that is stuck and it can't go anywhere? Everywhere you look, you're trapped. You look one way, you see the Egyptian army. The other way, you see the sea. There's nowhere to go. There is only pain and destruction in every which way. 
Now, when I see the Israelites here at this, and I think about situations in my own life where (coughs) it seemed like I was stuck, where it was impossible, I look at Luke 1.37. Luke 137 is when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told Mary she, the Holy Spirit was going to come upon her and she was going to be of a child and that child would be the child of God. And she said, how can this be so? For I am a virgin. It seemed impossible. And Gabriel said, for nothing is impossible with God. Now, In our NIV, it says, everything spoken by God will happen. Now, what's interesting with that is the King James leaves out a couple of words that are extremely important. And they are the words pos and rima. Pos means everything. Rima means everything spoken by God, and if we go to Matthew one thirty seven, the whole thing together actually reads in the, Greek, in the Hebrew, for nothing is impossible from, with, or by God, everything spoken. Meaning every word of God that is spoken means what God speaks is not impossible. God will make happen. So when I look at those impossible situations, like, like I, didn't, I didn't grow up thinking, you know, I am trapped, I am hurting, I need to pray to God to get out of this. I thought about, who can I reach out to to help me, or how can I get myself out of this myself? The, the first, my go-to is, how do I get out of this myself? How do I make a resolution for this? How do I find a way out? And I remember, and it seems so silly at the time, but I was like 24 years old, and I was an, an accountant, and I was, if you've ever done any uh, double-entry accounting, I was coming down with this balance sheet that was out of balance, Something was out of whack. And if you're an accountant, that is the most uncomfortable feeling you can probably experience in your life when the debits don't equal the credits. And I could not get this done. And it was a a new account I was working on. I hadn't been at the firm very long. And I was trying to figure this out. And I got this overwhelming sense of impossibility and it could not happen so I I actually and I it's probably not the first time in my life but it just sticks out but I stopped and I prayed and I let God know how stressed out I was about this and 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 I know now God already knew how stressed out I was and I asked God to help and work me through that And literally when I got done with prayer, I was calmed down and I was able to look at it again and I went through it and I found the impossible to be able to make that balance and make that happen. Whatever you see in life, when you see something becomes overwhelming, when the stress is beyond where you can go. Uh, where you don't see any way out. Go with what Gabriel said. Nothing is impossible for God. Everything spoken by God can happen. If it seems like you're going to drown if you go this way, if it seems like you're going to be attacked if you go this way, Trust in God. Lean on God. Know that God will carry you through. He carried the Israelites through the sea. He'll carry us through every impossibility we face in life. It doesn't mean that 
God's just going to take away everything in our life and we don't have hardship or we don't have discomfort or we don't have pain or we don't have hurt. But what it means is that pillar of cloud that was with Israel, the presence of God will be with us no matter what we face. We'll calm the storms of our hearts and we'll walk through everything with us. Nothing is impossible for God. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you that we can go and look at the exodus knowing that you want freedom in our lives, that you don't want us to be overtaken by fear, by doubt, by concern, by um, any enemy we would have in our lives. We pray, God, that you would calm our hearts, that you would give us strength, and that we, God, would trust that you're with us in everything. Help us to turn to you. Help us to realize that we can't do everything on our own and we need you. Today, God, we call out to you and we ask that you would guide us, that you would part the seas, and that you would make a way where it seems impossible in our lives. Give us strength, give us hope, and give us that peace that passes all understanding in the little things and in the big things so that we can step out in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great rest of the week.